Hi, today I want to discuss the speed of AI. You hear some people who are saying it continues to accelerate and will have AGI within a year or two. You have other people saying that we're hitting a data wall and progress from now on is, is going to be hard. To be honest, um, the whole AGI discussion is starting to bore me a little bit. And the main reason why is I think we'll be discussing AGI for the next 10 years without people being able to agree. So again, some people are saying that we'll never reach AGI and some people are saying it's almost already here. And I think the reason that clever people say such different things is simply because they define it differently. Uh, so I think we'll be in, in this discussion for uh, a very long time. So what we want AI to do is to improve our lives, right? Uh, we want to know when will AGI or when will AI transform our economy so that we can live better and more comfortable uh, lives, perhaps work less, make machines do, do the boring work so, so we can do what we like. That would be, of course, make a benefit. Um, the second thing is we would like AI uh, to cure uh, diseases so we don't lose loved ones or have to, to worry ourselves of getting diseases like, for example, cancer. Um, we also, or most of us, want AI to extend our lifespan and our health span so we can feel good and healthy for, for longer, uh, maybe forever. Um, and finally, energy is so important and a lot of people are very concerned with the climate. Uh, so we also want advanced AI to help us create clean and abundant energy. But when will AI be able to do these things? Um, I'll get back to that in, in a moment. Uh, but first, let me talk about how fast is AI actually developing. By the way, if you like this content and you would like me to do more of it, please do subscribe to the channel. It will help me devote more time to make these videos and to dig even further into the rabbit hole of the future. So please do like and, and subscribe. Anyway, um, you quite often hear AI is developing at an exponential pace. But what is exponential really? I think we all know this curves that just goes up and up. Well, that, that is an exponential curve, right? But many things actually can look quite exponential when you look at them. For example, if you have an investment portfolio and you look at it over a long enough period, say 30, 40 years, it will look exponential as well. If you look at the GDP or for example, the USA, um, here you have the chart, it looks pretty exponential, uh, although not fully, but you still have that upward uh, curve. Um, but let's try and, and compare, for example, the development of the GDP to the development in the speed of computers. You've probably heard about Moore's law. So in short, uh, what Moore says is that the transistor speed uh, doubles every two years, but the actual computer performance doubles every 18 months. So I won't go into specifics, but, but basically you can say Moore's law is that the performance of computers double every 18 to 24 months. And this has actually been going on for, for many, many years. When you look at it, it's definitely um, a very exponential line. We can see that here. But normally, when we look at these developments, we actually use an algorithmic scale. Um, so that actually turns an exponential curve into a, a straight one. So it's very important to understand the difference between when you're looking at an algorithmic scale or if you're looking at a normal scale. Uh, when looking at these exponential developments, they're normally easier to understand when looking at the algorithmic scale. So just comparing uh, the US GDP to the speed of computers, we can see it seems like nothing is happening at all to the GDP, even though it's actually growing relatively fast. Okay, so let's move on to AI. So how can we even measure uh, the performance uh, and the speed of, of AI? There are different ways of looking at this. Uh, I guess the most popular one and the one we can ease, most easily compare uh, to computers would be what is called flops. So that that is um, basically the capacity of the AI models uh, to train and and kind of their compute AI compute speed. Um, so without going into further technicalities, if we look at the flops. Um, uh, this has been measured by OpenAI over the last 10 years, and we are seeing a doubling speed of 3.9 or 8 to 9 months, which basically means that it's a lot faster than Moore's law, right? So imagine uh, two years' time, then, you know, 
every almost uh, four months, we see AI doubling in, in compute, but it will take almost two years before traditional compute doubles. So again, looking here at an algorithmic scale, we are seeing how AI is developing way faster than traditional compute. So will this be able to continue? We don't know. But for the past 10 years, measuring it by the flops, AI is definitely accelerating at an unprecedented speed. But does that mean the output of AI is accelerating the same way? I would say probably not. For example, you could discuss, does flops equal IQ, or of course, IQ is meant to uh, measure individuals' uh, intelligence. But if we uh, apply IQ tests to, for example, the chat GPT models, they have been able to estimate the, the IQ of, of each model. And what we're seeing here is this is a normal scale, so not an algorithmic scale. And we're seeing it's pretty much a straight line, and then it actually curves a little bit up in 2024. So we do see... Um, not an exponential development, but a straight line development uh, in terms of the improvement in IQ. But then let's let's do kind of a thought experiment. So uh, let's talk about, so who has actually invented the big impactful things? Like who has invented things like uh, uh, the light bulb, for example, the cars, the, the Turing test, uh, many of these things that, that really uh, matter today, the steam engine, for example. Well, it has been people with a pretty high IQ. But the interesting thing is it has not been the people with the highest IQ of all time. So so let's try and have a look here at, at people with the highest IQ of, of all time. So of course, these people have all done quite amazing things, but they have not had the kind of impact uh, that the previous people we talked about had. Um, so again, uh, AI compute does not equal uh, AI, IQ, and IQ, again, does not equal impact in terms of it will not necessarily be the person with the highest IQ who will solve, uh, for example, aging or that will solve fusion energy, but most likely it will be a person with an IQ beyond 140, at least if we look at, at the historical inventions that really have impact. But why is this? Well, it's because if you really want to solve world problems, you actually need a combination of skills, right? So, uh, first of all, if it's a big complex problem, you, you, you need resources. You also, and resources is, is normally also about, about network. It's about some communication skills to actually persuade other people to give you the resources. Um, but it's also about creativity, thinking out of the box. Um, it's, of course, about knowing a lot of the topic you're actually going to invent in, but also knowing a lot outside of your topic so you can actually connect the dots if the uh, problem is is very complex and it it, it, uh, it has a breadth beyond just one topic, that, for example, chemistry. Um, and then it, you need system thinking. You need to be able to kind of plan your thinking in a structured way and not just give like rapid fire answers that we're used to getting from, from AI. So let's first say, well, AI is actually already helping in all of these areas. I mean, there are definitely cancer cases uh, that have been discovered early because AI is helping. There are definitely new uh, cancer treatments that are saving people today because of AI. Uh, the COVID vaccine is another example. It would have taken a lot longer to develop without AI. So AI is already helping. But what AI is doing here, it is speeding up the calculations. It is not the magic bullet at the moment. Uh, we can't expect AI to suddenly say, hey, I invented fusion energy, here's the formula. Um, AI is still a tool in, in that process. So I actually asked ChatGPT to, to store itself on uh, these parameters we, we just talked about. So um, uh, the knowledge, both in depth and in breadth, uh, the creativity, the systems thinking, uh, the grit and resilience, which basically means that, you know, you keep on ongoing uh, with a problem, leadership and collaboration. Um, it is improving uh, on all of these. Um, so, of course, we know the knowledge and depth that will, of course, be about uh, the, the, the data we can put into the system. The creativity is when you give it uh, data and you then say, well, considering this invention and this invention, you know, what would be a likely way 
to invent to invent a third thing. And then if you test this with, for example, chat GPT, you will actually come up with, with ideas. So it is getting more creative with using the data we are giving it. Um, system thinking, if you notice it, the newest update um, of uh, ChatGPT, it actually thinks for a little bit about the problem instead of just spitting out the first and, and the best answer. But I think we, we still have some, some way to go here. Uh, and this is also about the grid and resilience, that it just doesn't pop up with the first answer, but that it can actually go back and work on a problem. And, and I think we are still uh, quite a bit from, from that. Um, so I think in, in this model, I think ChatGPT has uh, overestimated the, the promise by quite a bit. But, but I do agree that it is uh, improving. And when we talk about leadership and co uh, co collaboration, um, I'm looking at it as, uh, for example, a model that will have several agents that will work together to, to solve a problem. So looking at this next graph, uh, which has been done by Leopold Aschenbrenner, uh, a former employee of, of OpenAI, he's kind of describing how ChatGPT is moving up in IQ, and it is moving from a high school student in these uh, uh, current years um, to scientist, uh, to a scientist level. Um, and we'll get that kind of... Uh, automated researcher into uh, engineer level by 2028 so let, let, let's just you know consider we're talking about a very qualified very intelligent engineer that we can copy and copy and copy it doesn't mean that that person will come up with the silver bullets to these world problems but definitely uh, they they would be getting much closer to to doing that another thing that that's important is if we talk about, for example, curing aging or curing cancer, it's a very, very big task, right? If you look at it as a book, it's probably a thick book. And at the moment, if you ask ChatGPT to solve something, it very quickly runs out of tokens. I would say, uh, looking at this slide, uh, we are past uh, that ChatGPT just gives you work that, that uh, would be like a couple of minutes of your time. I think today it might... Uh, give you work that's like 15 to 30 minutes of your time if you give it the correct prompt. But to solve things like cancer, it, it's much more complex, right? So it, it will need to do like years of work and have enough tokens to do that from the prompt. So the idea is you basically ask a model, please solve cancer, and it will come back uh, with what would be thousands of years of scientists' work to actually do it, right? So like a thousand scientists sitting together for 10 years trying to, to solve a cancer. And this would take millions, if not billions of, of tokens. So when would we actually be there? Well, we can see by, by 2027, uh, we are getting to, to that stage um, where, where there will be enough tokens for a model like ChatGPT to think about these more complex problems and you could say write a book with one prompt. So that is happening. That does not equal that you actually solve cancer because that would be the same as giving one scientist uh, uh, the job of solving cancer and giving him, let's say, two or three years. I mean, we've tried that. It, it's, it is still not happening. So there's no guarantee. But again, uh, if we can get uh, the models to collaborate and we can copy them to an extent, so we have uh, a million AI scientists working at solving cancer, um, and uh, one minute's work is equal of a couple of years' work for, for a normal scientist, we will definitely uh, get closer to, to doing it. So looking at what would the time frame be to, to solving these issues? I mean, again, nobody knows, right? So I just did the experiment of, of feeding this back into to some of the big language models and say, when is it likely that AI would be at a level to solve the issue? So um, what it is saying that... Um, from 25 to 30, even though we do see the power of AI growing, it is most likely that AI is still that assistant that would really speed up um, solving these problems, but it will not solve it on, on itself, or it would not solve it by itself. Uh, when we get to the 30s, 30s to 35, and maybe chat GPT models, like, I don't know how fast they will rename them, and it doesn't really matter, but at that time, it will start to think much more independently and and we will maybe see some of these silver bullet solutions from ai so in, in that period so in about six to, to ten years time we, we may see ai more independently actually 
supporting solving, let's say, fusion. So if there's like one uh, big challenge within fusion, we might give that to AI and pretty autonomous, uh, autonomously it's going to solve it. When we get into uh, 2035 and beyond, it is likely that AI can take a much more independent role and we can kind of just put them on the task of, of solving these issues, so, such as why do we age and how do we stop aging and, and how can we actually uh, make fusion energy work. That said, there are still many things in, in, the, in the real world. Like, for example, one thing is that you understand how to optimize fusion energy and how to build the reactors. It might still take 20 or 15 more years building out the whole grid to actually make it happen. If you find uh, different cures for cancer or other types of aging, it will also take time to, to, to implement them. Um, but my best guess is here that, that we will start to see AI actually transforming the world in a way that it actually adds real value to us. I still think um, that, that even when we come to like 2045 and let's say AI has been part of solving fusion energy, it has solved longevity, escape velocity, there will still be people saying we don't have AGI. And by their own definition, they will probably be correct. Uh, but the point here is that I do think that AI, if, if it doesn't hit major barriers, it, it will be better and better at solving real-world problems because we're already seeing AI assisting in solving real-world problems and it's likely that AI will be able to do it more and more independently. So at least this is one way of looking at, at AI progress instead of just uh, being in, in this kind of narrow debate of when we're going to have AGI. I hope this was helpful. See you soon. Bye.